So, on Monday, the Witt School of Governance in Johannesburg hosted a dialogue in collaboration with Democracy Works Foundation, Business Leadership SA, and the Platform for the Protection of Whistleblowers in Africa. Now, the gathering was about defending South Africa's democracy and the fight against state capture and corruption. One of the panel discussions was on whistleblowing in the South African context, focusing on the role of the citizens themselves in taking up the issues. Joining us in studio to talk more about this is David Lewis, the Executive Director of uh, Corruption Watch. David, good to see you. Hi, Thank you good. very much Thanks, for coming yeah. in. So as an organization that deals with very sensitive issues, what can you say about whistleblowing in South Africa? Well, our, our entire model is about whistleblowing. We're encouraging people to report experiences of corruption to us, which they do in large numbers. And it's important to recognize that without whistleblowing, there is no combating corruption. This is not like assault or even fraud where there's a clear perpetrator and a clear victim. This is a clandestine arrangement between two people or institutions, both of whom are guilty. And so you need somebody who has observed this or picked up an email in the dustbin or, or seen something untoward to report on this. And people do so, the people who do so are vulnerable and need to be protected. The stakes are very, very high often. Yeah, I mean, that was one of the comments I think that Tuli Maroncella had made and said that it's a very lonely journey for somebody who yeah. decides to step up to the plate and become a whistleblower. It, it is, you know, which is why, you know, I think that we have to make them less lonely. Uh, we have to have legislative protection. We have to have a whole series of formal protections, which are very important. But I think that the best way and most effective way of protecting whistleblowers is to make them less lonely, to make them to acknowledge them as the heroes that they are rather than as people who have an axe to grind or, you know, even to some extent there are people who view them as sort of spies, as mm. pimpies, as yeah. people who are ratting on their fellow workers or their managers. Instead, they've got to be viewed as, as, as heroes. And this is the best way of protecting them. I mean, people, others need to know people who might want to harm them or harm their interests in any way need to know that if you strike at a whistleblower, you strike at the whole of the society that supports what it is that they have done and they need to be less isolated. Are we seeing more and more South Africans, and we, we will focus entirely on the South African scenario, stepping up, coming out and saying, this is wrong and, well, and I'm, I'm witnessing it. Well, in our little way, we are. You know, we're, we're averaging now at about the rate of about 120, 130 reports a week. And not all of them are serious corruption either. So I think you are. I mean, you know, the, the, the infamous uh, Gupta leaks is an instance of whistleblowing on a grand scale. But much of what you read about in the media just about every day now, what you hear from the likes of us, is as a result of people coming forward and uh, blowing the whistle. Mm. I mean, it's quite, quite incredible, uh, this particular discussion that you were involved in, a, a former senior Trillion employee, actually, who made disclosures about the company to former public protector Tula Melancela, had to pull out of it at the last minute for security concerns. Uh, you hear intimid intimidation of MPs when they speak out against what they believe is corruption and what they're not happy with. So Absolutely. we still at a very... I know you say we should protect them but i suppose it's it's easier to keep quiet sometimes no no look i mean there's no there's no way but to to try and persuade people to be courageous and to do their civic duty yeah. and as i say then and sorry to repeat myself to say that their role will be celebrated and to ensure that it is but but it is it's not an easy it's not an easy path yeah it never is you know um and you need support i mean it's analogous to a, somebody in the early 70s who joined a trade union movement and was victimized uh the only thing that would save her would be the support of her fellow workers now that's more difficult in the case of whistleblowers but the one thing that will save whistleblowers is if we view them as as people that we want as a society to protect but there, are, there needs to be stronger legislative uh, and statutory Absolutely. protections as I mean, well. I'm going I'm to bring this conversation to our very own organisation, the SABC. Yeah. I mean, we saw um, our eight journalists stepping yeah, forward and speaking absolutely. 
And we saw one of them lost their lives. Yes. And uh, Suna Fent, unfortunately, losing her life. And, uh, you know, we, we call it as a broken heart syndrome, but the intimidation that she went yeah. through that was spoken about uh -huh. during the journey, but mostly after she had passed. You know, these are some of the, the, the things that, that are, are real. Yeah. Um, and yet, the good that they have done, I don't know. Does it outweigh that? It's very difficult to tell. Well, you know, for us, the good that they've done is, is fantastic. I mean, you know, where you want to see them vindicated is firstly by the support that they receive, and secondly, you want to see those on whom they blew the whistle severely Taken punished. To and that's, yeah. that's what at the moment is most lacking, and that's what you want to see. And I'm sort of rather hopeful when I see the latest statements of the SABC board that there seems to be some genuine will yeah. to publish to punish some of the key perpetrators you know and i'm sure that you know can't bring back sooner fenta but it can it, it could at least vindicate the actions of the seven of her colleagues who yeah. are still thankfully with us absolutely you want to see it being worthwhile yeah. at the end of it. Yeah. Let's talk about active citizenry because that is, at the end of the day, what it's about. I mean, um, authorities uh, cannot be, well, you know, people that are watching over can't be everywhere at the same yeah. time. So it's up to you and me to keep our eyes open, to be yeah. vigilant. I know we've got a, a slide that is going to sort of describe it, but at the same time, how important is active citizenry? Perhaps you can talk us through this. Again, that's, you know, that's our entire model. I mean, cor corruption is a crime against the public. And, uh, and if the public want to prevent it, they have to indicate their intolerance for it. And in order to indicate their intolerance for it, they have to be willing to report it, to actively oppose it. And, you know, as I said from the beginning, it is absolutely the critical ingredient in combating corruption. There is not, there is not one single large corruption incident anywhere that I can remember that was not discovered by somebody who was willing to speak out. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes the anonymity is protected forever. I mean, I think, you know, to this day, nobody knows, as far as I'm, I know, who leaked the, the Panama Papers, for example. Uh, and I don't, I'm not sure who knows who leaked the, 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 the Gupta, Gupta emails, emails either, but yeah. I, I, I don't know and I don't want to know. And I mean, let that person keep his or her head as low as they can for a while. Yeah. But that's a, that person is a real hero, you know, whoever it is could have made a major contribution to turning around corruption in Indeed. this country. You know, but there, and I know that this came up as a conversation during this particular seminar um, about uh, whistleblowers, that the National Prosecuting Authority mishandles whistleblowers and, and their role also came under the spotlight, which is, which is worrying for, say, somebody like me who does information and I do want to come forward. Where do the loyalties lie? Talk to us about this. So what was the focus on the MPA? <laughs> The NPA is a, is a grave problem. I mean, you know, we have lots of people coming to us because they don't trust the prosecuting authorities yeah. or they don't trust the, the police. And, you know, they're well, well, for the most part, they're fairly well advised not to, at least at the senior levels. Uh, you know, at, the, at, the, at the, the next layer down, there are a lot of people that you can trust. But if you have an, a powerful politician or a, or, a, or a powerful business person at the end of your complaint, the likelihood of the, at the moment, the likelihood of an institution like the NPA or the Hawks doing anything uh, is really slim. So you're not, you're unlikely to get vindicated by that. You're much better off blowing the whistle to the media or to an organization like ourselves. Yeah. But the truth is, and you know, we said we made this point about punishment. Until we do something about the NPA and the Hawks, uh, the the vindication that comes with blowing the whistle is not going to be there. The real reward is not going to be there, and that is that the perpetrators be punished. Yeah. And you know, whistle. Whistles will start getting blown, and they have been already to a significant extent, on the police and the NPA as well, because it's not incompetence that is making them so incompetent, so seemingly incompetent. Mm. You know, there are experiences that many people can recount 
of things that are not investigated, many things. I mean, the, you know, take these Gupta emails. I mean, just over the last four weeks, there are a couple of, of, of incidents instances that have been revealed by the Gupta emails and reported in the media that an organization like the NPA could just put a brown envelope around and go and prosecute. That's how clearly and clear the evidence is. is. There. It's there. It's and and you know, they're the last people to come to the party. Yeah. You know, the whole country is talking about it, except the people that are charged with holding to account yeah. the perpetrators. Except we did hear from, I think it was a, an interview with the BBC, Atul Gupta, just absolutely saying that these are false, they're not real. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, yeah, but know, that was his opinion one of the times he's spoken out, and it was yes. very recent. I think it was yesterday, yesterday, this, inter yeah, this no. uh, interview. But I, I just want to end off this interview, which I think is very, very important. You mentioned it. Um, a bit earlier that there are there are gaps in whistleblower protection laws. What needs to be introduced to protect these whistleblowers more? You know, I, th I think you know one of the things that we've recommended is at the moment it's a little complex this, but at the moment the only whistleblowers who are protected are those who are protected against employment detriment. In mm. other words, getting fired or something of the sort. We think that there need to be protection for citizen whistleblowers as well. In other words, people who are not um, in an employment relationship with those on whom they blow the whistle. And I think the most important thing there is to set up a, a fund, a, a statutory fund, that will enable whistleblowers to protect themselves legally. Because one of the great risks of this whole business is that you are generally up against, a whistleblower is generally, almost inevitably, up against somebody or, or some institution with vastly greater resources than their own. And inevitably, you know, if a whistleblower is, is harmed in some way, there is, a, there is a litigation and a legal investigation at the end of it. And they need to have the resources to be able to fight it out. And that's a complex thing to introduce. Mm. I mean, in the United States, for example, whistleblowing is incentivized and rewarded by people getting a share of the proceeds wow. of what is reclaimed as a result of their whistleblowing. That's controversial. It's controversial, but it's, but it's, a, but it's it interesting. Encouraging. And it, boy, has it brought, it's brought plenty of false uh, claims I'm out sure. of the country, but I'm it's sure. brought plenty of very powerful uh, yeah. uh, revelations as well. Very interesting conversation, David Lewis. Thank you very much for talking to us here on Morning Live, the director of Corruption Watch, talking about our role as citizens uh, in blowing the whistle and fighting corruption. All right, let us take a break. We'll see you after this. We uh, put Kenya under the spotlight and uh, protests that are taking place there.